to be a more productive society so that we can pay. Um, in relation to, to that uh, answer, uh, how about the dictatorship? They say that corruption right now is not anywhere 40% but 50%. I don't think so. I don't think so. I really don't think so, having, having worked in government. Uh, I'm, I can't talk about local governments. So I can only talk about national government. National governments already constrained at the seams, especially in its operations uh, expenditures. So. so during your regime, you, would you not be looking into this said corruption? You, you have to. But corruption is merely a function of what you have to do. It is not the function. Okay? Now, if you focus your campaign solely on corruption, then you will be just a crime fighter or graft buster. And that's not what a president is. Corruption is, it is one of, uh, it is an aspect, but it is not the aspect. And I have, I have, I can proudly say that there was minimal corruption in my department during my time. Yeah, that's in your department. Well, then when you're president, all the departments are under you. So it follows that you can do it. You've done it in your own home. You can export it, hopefully. Hopefully, so, uh, I mean, and there are two things to solve corruption, too. the positive and the negative. The problem is the, the Philippines tends to curb corruption on the negative. It's prohibited, you punish, but it does not give incentives to public officials for good behavior. does not. And you cannot work in a system today's day and age without incentives for good behavior. If somebody saves the Philippines at a billion pesos a year because he invents a process, he will not get a bonus. No way. But if he steals about 1,000, theoretically, he's caught, he's convicted, he faces a prison term. I don't think there's balance there. That's not a carrot and a stick. It's all stick and no carrot. I think that's the best way for me to try to solve corruption too. You try to avoid people getting tempted by building up their fortitude materially. I mean, moral, morality is very important, but we know that all, not only the soul counts, but also the stomach. You have to eat also. And, you, and right now, it's not merely a question of eating. It's a question of quality of life, which all people aspire for. Let's be very re realistic with that. And that can only be done very difficultly, though, through public sector reform. Uh, and, and that is a big challenge. Uh, my second question is from a good friend um, based abroad on RSW actually, and it's quite specific. Um, the, I mean, this, the latter part is quite specific. Um, what are your plans for the OFW? Most of the presidential candidates say they bring them home. So what happens with you, that? You can't bring them home. Yeah, what happens is that when there's no more money coming in from the OFW, is how you... Although it is an ideal really to bring them home because the 9 million OFWs produce $17 billion of revenue while a single business process outsourcing sector of 350,000 Filipinos employed here produce $6.5 billion of revenue. 97% per more or less informal statistics show that uh, our OFWs abroad are employed not in blue collar or even in managerial positions. Only 3% are. The rest are, uh, you know, uh, non-skilled, uh, unfortunately. And people who are trained to be skilled are employed in other, in other jobs. However, let's be very realistic about it. Until you are able to build an acceptable <coughs> alternative for them here, and when, once you go abroad to a better climate, you will not come home to less, except for the fact that you will accept a little trade-off for the benefit of being with your loved ones and the comfort and security of home. And the prescription is the same, to try to build your country as an acceptable investment destination, both domestically and foreign. That is what, oh, a little amelioration programs, you know, bring them home when they're stuck and work, but that's more for show than anything else. That's not a sustainable policy. What should be done is twofold. You build up your government, you build up your economy, strengthen your country so that there are opportunities for them here. If not, there is freedom of movement of people, and it's unfair to restrict them here. 
On the other hand, you realize because of that realistic policy, they are there. And we work double time. <coughs> we work double time to try to protect them abroad from exploitation, from, uh, from violation of their rights. Unfortunately, I've seen several times, that's why some politicians are constrained also to bring them home. And I don't know why, I want to find out why. Ambassadors, they're stuck in Philippine embassies, and the ambassadors have to shell out their own personal money sometimes to feed them because of the different policies of countries that uh, that you have to pay not only for their ticket but sometimes an exit visa which can cost a thousand US dollars per person, mm -hmm. etc. You know. So uh, I, I think it's a very difficult problem because you would like to to keep them here naturally, but you cannot restrict. You, you cannot prevent them. You can only uh, take such measures as will enhance protection for them. But once they're abroad and they get a tempting offer somewhere else, which also the Philippine government does not does not recommend them to do it, they do it. You're still stuck because the government still has to bring them home at a painful cost at times. You know this guy Angelo de la Cruz, who became a hero here, is one example. You know. He was employed in, uh, uh, I think, Saudi Arabia or Kuwait, and then he went to Iraq. And he was taken hostage in Iraq. And uh, the government, I, I believe, uh, had to uh, take some measures which are not too popular with the international community to bring him home. And we treat him like a hero. I mean, problems like this will arise. At the end of the day, even though the government doesn't one for lack of doing anything, at the end of the day, you know, buggy ends up in your lap. Yeah, the follow-up specific question to that is, do you have statistics of Filipinos abroad who are languishing in jail or cases? I really don't have that, uh, the, I really don't have statistics, <coughs> but one thing that the Filipinos must realize, when you go to a foreign jurisdiction, you are subject to the law of that jurisdiction. What the Philippine government can do is to try to help you protect your rights. But it cannot guarantee two things. It cannot guarantee a decision that will be made in your favor, and it cannot guarantee also that you will go scot-free if you commit something wrong. That should be a fair trade-off. Before you go abroad, it is your obligation to know what kind of legal regime you face at the starting point also several like you go into Malaysia death for drug traffickers uh, things like that it is their responsibility to know and those going to be deployed cannot say they cannot read and write and they have no access to the internet cafes they do so a question of a person languishing in jail the only thing that the Philippine government can do is to try its best to protect their rights now Several times, through the intercession of leaders of countries, there have been payment of uh, blood oaths and the like. But we should not expect that as a normal course of treatment. We should ex expect the reality that when we're somewhere else, we're subject to that else's law, not our own. Okay, let's move on. Fedora, you're next, and then Wyatt, then we move on to the POC. So there are many questions online, so we will really have to. Um, I have several questions. No, one question. One question. Okay. Um, you were talking about uh, very limited economic resources, and so and also uh, uh, a need for budgetary support. And uh, sir, um, would you um, not also? Uh, try to focus on proper budgetary allocations and proper way of spending these allocations. Like, for example, I, I will not go far in the LGUs or local government units, and I observe that there are a lot of um, unnecessary spending. Yeah, but the LGUs are only subject to, you know, we're, we're caught with that, with the LGUs. We have to give them their IRA share, automatically released, and they have their own budgetary processes based on their elected yeah. uh, Sangunian uh, representatives. Uh, yes, sir, but um, as, uh, when you become president, uh, what would be 